I'm going to start our webinar. Thank you so much. Uh, hello, everyone, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Mahtab Mahmoudzadeh as your webinar moderator to help to mediate today's presentation. I am so honored to have all of you here, especially our dear DRS, DRS presenters. So welcome to the Gender Mainstreaming in Urban Planning webinar. Well, as you know, uh, this webinar is going to hold by cooperation with uh, Austrian Cultural Firm, uh, Culture Exchange Talk, Culture Architect, Planners, Engineer, and of course, Museum of Creativity and Architecture. And uh, dear attendees, if you have any question, uh, you can write uh, me uh, on private chat section or you can raise hand, so uh, you have to click on raise hand, uh, top of the screen, you can find it, and uh, we are going to answer your question in the last part of the webinar, I mean after finishing all presentations in discussion part. Uh, and right now, I'm going to uh, like, I'm going to uh, introduce you Mrs. Uh, Zahra Taranayalda, architect and city planners. Mrs. Yalda uh, graduated in architecture uh, in Italy, Polytechnic University of Turin, and also in France, Paris 8 in uh, 1978. She has been working in inner Iran for over, for over uh, 35 years in the field of architecture and urban and regional planning and design. And uh, as associate to consulting engineer companies. Her most important uh, projects are a city master and detailed plans uh, for the cities of Mashhad, Susa, Yaz, Kerman, Tabas, and many other Iranian cities. And finally, the master strategic plan uh, for Tehran from 2004 to 2012. And uh, topics of special interest of Mrs. Yalda are uh, renovation, um, restoration, rehabilitation of old urban tissues, uh, regeneration of historical urban areas and uh, city centers, uh, regeneration of informal settlement and uh, peripheral areas of bigger cities, uh, public spaces and pedestrians are uh, more human living spaces for people. And of course, about her recent activities, uh, I can mention uh, social activism and consultancy for Tehran as the head of an influent social virtual group of artists, architect, architect, architects, and uh, planners, and other specialists and educated. And of course, she's trying to convince the city of Tehran to change its attitudes towards the better lifestyle for all social groups living in Greater Tehran. And again, welcome Mrs. Yalda. I'm sorry, uh, open your mic at first. Okay. Sorry. I'm honored to be here with all you friends and especially with Eva Kyle and uh, my dear friend Golmar Khatibi. gender mainstreaming it has not been really all over these years where I've been working is not my specialty but I tried for today to have uh,
uh, a PowerPoint on what uh, uh, gender streaming has been uh, Tehran and for everybody else in uh, much more problems and see in the end of very big now. Period of uh, 40 years, uh, the population has more than quadrupled. This is in the north of the city, we have the mountains, Albors. Uh, unlike all Europeans and also some cities like Isfahan in Iran, uh, where cities are situated around the river. Lots of people coming to live in the city and a lot of construction all over, high rises that weren't really well leaded into uh, uh, um, logic, let's say, uh, uh, way of uh, being built. And uh, you have... Um, All these skyscrapers everywhere, high rises everywhere. Tehran is full of coffee. Run. And together with Farman Pharma, you known and very consultant engineer, they together um, and very very polluted it's one of the 10 first polluted cities in the world we have the problem of women who first of all they don't not all of them drive poor uh, women don't have cars, and many women uh, can't really um, go around the city as they wish. But some women, of course, try to help the area men cleaner and drive on bicycles. This is very rare, but some do this. Tehran is not a walking city, and motorcycles enter easily on the sidewalks. So this is a problem also. We can't walk well around the city, especially when we're women and when we are taking children around with us. And life is always harder for low-income social groups. 
and if they're women, it's double harder, and the discrimination is high. After the revolution, not only after the revolution, it's actually uh, always uh, in Iran, in the culture of Iran, there has been gender segregation in schools, in universities, mosques, buses, etc. But this is now after the revolution because of the Islamic Republic. It is more accentuated, let's say. Um, like before, of course, we went to girls' school. I didn't go to schools where boys were with us, only girls. But in the university, of course, the, uh, there was always a mix uh, classes of uh, boys and girls. And uh, in buses, we never had uh, people uh, sitting uh, divided in, uh, dividedly. But now it is so. They decided because of too many people um, using buses and because they had to stick together like sardines in a box. So they had to somehow divide them for them to be more easily standing while the bus was going. So, and in mosques, well, of course, the, um, uh, it has always been divided, the uh, spaces for uh, women. But lately, for example, uh, when we go to mosques, I did go some months ago, um, for uh, um, talking about the uh, problems of uh, local neighborhoods, uh, they invited the women to the men's part in the mosque because they said, uh, you can come and talk. The microphone was there. So actually, even in a mosque where always men and women were divided, now we could sit together and talk about the problems of the uh, community. Also in private spaces, in, um, this is only to say how Iran is like. Uh, in private space, when we have parties or when we go um, to see people in their house or uh, somewhere else, the women tend to sit aside. So um, actually, this segregation doesn't mean uh, doesn't have a, um, an explicit uh, negative uh, view, but it's uh, uh, part of the culture, actually. But things, little by little, have changed. Uh, Forty years ago, when we had uh, a new government, new uh, political lifestyle, um, people started uh, being more social, actually. And uh, because the revolution was for the poor and uh, it was with the uh, aim to make more equality, um, lower income people were more happy uh, to have their own, um, you know, girls, uh, children going to school and to universities, and there was more equality, let's say, for people uh, having uh, education in all levels. And um, Iran being a rich country, actually, um, even poorer people started having all this uh, sit apart, but they're more populated. The, the class classes are more, more populated by girls. Public spaces for women after the revolution, little by little, they started creating these spaces for women, not only for sports, uh, for uh, stadiums or playgrounds where they could do um, gymnastic, etc., but also parks for women, because women having to wear a scarf on their head all the time, sometimes wanted to be without a scarf outside the house in public space. So they created these uh, parks where here you see it says uh, the entrance of men is uh, 
not uh, permitted. parks and everywhere else. So for all these um, uh, many uh, issues that we have in the city of Tehran, the gender issues, uh, there has been a frown bureau for gender experts to work there with their, of course, uh, the boss is always a man, but uh, more sometimes also women, but more uh, man. And the Deputy Mayor of Social and Cultural Affairs who has always been um, a people of uh, energy into the gender mainstreaming uh, problems. Um, the this I told you for, uh, before that the more active women in the society we do have and universities more than 50 percent less but less women in working places especially for medium class for example I remember myself when I wanted to work as an architect uh, at the very beginning of the revolution I had come back to Iran 40 years ago they said uh, or 41 years ago um, they said uh, no, first we have to give the job to men. So I wasn't accepted even if uh, the people there said, you are better than the men, you have studied better than all these other uh, young boys who want to come and work, but uh, we have to give them the job. Now, many, all there were men who were the boss, and then the actual work was done by the girls, by the ladies. But now the ladies say, no, we want to be the boss also. So even if they wear their black chadors on their heads, they are boss, many become uh, uh, mayors of uh, smaller uh, um, how do you say, smaller areas in the city, in the city of Tehran, we have, it's divided into 22 um, different um, uh, regions, no, it's not regions, um, it's, um, uh, I don't know how, how we call them, well, uh, um, parts of the districts. District. Districts, districts, exactly, maybe. legal districts, exactly. So, um, um, now, th there are many women who are mayors of districts, some of them were, I can count, since 20, 30 years ago, and uh, still many, many, and uh, especially for the um, women's uh, issues and uh, the gender uh, streaming issues, there are always women who are at the head of uh, the uh, leading um, uh, action. So um, they organize workshops for women on safety, firefighting, environment, garbage division, the division of the garb, you know, um, glass and uh, dry and uh, wet and this and that. So um, uh, this is something that in the city of Tehran has not really yet been um, really understood by everyone. And uh, we have problems with the garbage, even if they collect it well, but still the division is not well done. And there's not uh, all these uh, different places where they should put. Now, there are COSAR centers for entrepreneurship. And uh, uh, more than uh, more urban services and welfare for women is what they are um, into. Uh, in the, uh, for as art is concerned, we have these uh, little uh, houses uh, in all uh, different uh, 
uh, neighborhoods where art and civil life um, is uh, somehow presented to the uh, neighborhood and especially uh, to women, artistic competition in the women's centers of Sharbanu and women's parks. And this everywhere in Tehran. So um, there are programs of art. And here it says women changing the profile of the city. It means that uh, they believe that women will change this profile. In Kosar centers are the centers uh, created by the municipality uh, to create jobs for uh, lonely, uh, uh, how do you say, um, women head of the family, where the husband has died or where uh, something has happened, and the woman is, has to economically uh, lead the family. So uh, they, they make for these women, and there are more than uh, uh, 800 uh, people now, uh, no, not now, more than that, uh, something like 1,000 women working in these uh, centers, not only working places, but exhibitions, bazaars, promotion, advertisement, good prices for everyone to come and buy, and uh, free boots that the municipality gives to the uh, 800 jobs, this was some years ago, now it's uh, more. And uh, there's this uh, very huge place the, in Goftegu Park where they can exhibit what they have uh, produced. Uh, some uh, time ago, uh, somebody said that uh, uh, this is too a la mode, there are no buttons in these uh, dresses but the lady who is the head of the, the production, uh, I mean, in the municipality said, no, it doesn't matter, it's the lady's choice to wear these uh, dresses without buttons wherever they want. And in the exhibitions, of course, uh, the um, important people from the municipality come and uh, uh, there, there's also art and handicraft, not only dresses, and they do this for the women um, who exhibit also in bigger parks. You see all these little boutiques that are uh, in a park in north of Tehran, Park in Melad. And uh, uh, of course, there are uh, all these experts uh, doing uh, reunions and getting together to uh, work for uh, the good of uh, the, let's say, lower income women in the city. They open these centers for women's empowerment. And uh, as health is uh, concerned, uh, there are um, different uh, programs where uh, women in parks can uh, do sports and uh, uh, think uh, about their health uh, by all different kinds of exercise and sport. These are ladies' parks. There is, of course, pros and cons. I went to see these parks, actually, one of them. So how, first, I was very much against, and I thought, what is this, to, to have parks for women? But then when I went, I saw that it was a a good choice because they could take their scarf out and play and sit around in the park in the grass and play and play music and sing and do whatever that with the presence of men they couldn't. So it's a release, it's a relief for women to go into these places and be happy doing uh, chatting together and eating and bringing their children and uh, getting uh, uh, there's also these religious uh, um, programs for religious women in parks so they can get together and do their uh, ceremonies and um, all together doing sports is also nice and you see there the 
young ladies uh, taking their scarves out uh, and uh, being uh, more free to to uh, to act as they want. There is mother parks uh, where they do all this also. Uh, we have good um, uh, sp uh, spaces for uh, uh, for women to play and uh, be together. Uh, we also in the city have uh, always had women doing NGOs, uh, doing, I mean, uh, uh, how do you say, uh, fighting for uh, to have a better environment. So this lady that you see here, is one of the, uh, the first 20 something 30 years ago and I was an NGO at the age of 105 years uh, two three weeks ago and lately we have had all these programs in on BBC showing her because we also had a film made for her and it was shown on uh, BBC uh, how this woman courageously um, fought, fighted for the um, city of Tehran and uh, everywhere else in other regions of the country. In some uh, 16 regions out of 28, she had uh, different, uh, uh, how do you say, um, uh, sub-organizations uh, of the uh, organization we had. It was called the Women's Society for Fighting Environmental Pollution. That's where we worked with her. Um, now uh, we start this other topic about Women's Health Care Office uh, that has its uh, uh, 352, um, how do you say, um, not offices, but uh, something like uh, 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 where people go to, not to hospital, but a smaller hospital. Uh, um, I don't know how you call them, Eva. Uh, the little, um, uh, oh dear, no, me viene. Um, Ambulances, maybe? Yeah, no, ambulance. I am also yes. not sure. Not ambulance, but uh, um, where it's a fixed place for um, for doctors um, and for uh, there are also health office, health doctors uh, office centers. Yeah, a yeah. Small health, health care center. Yeah. Health care center. Exactly. Health care center, and uh, so we have them in all. There is, of course, in Iran, a, 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 a ministry for health and, uh, uh, you know, uh, for health, but there is also municipality doing, uh, uh, the municipality giving uh, services at a lower level in the uh, neighborhoods. So it's uh, nice to see that they work and they they um, work in to prevent, in for prevention, which is very important. They take care of uh, uh, the educational uh, uh, community-based groups for elderly, the young folks, mother and child. Mother and child, is, I also went to uh, 30, more than 30 years ago for my own child. They await the child and they uh, see if everything is okay. It's not really doctors, but they're people who take care of the population on a, on a flat level. Oh, everyone has to go and uh, take care. Uh, and they prevent, uh, they teach you for prevention of obesity, diabetes, smoking, and they do um, uh, classes for women on uh, care of environment and uh, also in personal uh, health they do consultancy 
screening for diabetes, blood pressure, etc. So they take care of the women. And they also take care of children of divorce. They have all the consultancy uh, for, uh, for uh, mothers and fathers who have div are divided and they don't exactly know what to do with the child and so they help them. There is also a league for memory, memory means uh, memory, the, for Alzheimer, anti-Alzheimer uh, in old age. Uh, they uh, take care of the old people. And they also do have programs on all levels for the disabled uh, people who um, they have to fix. You see here, for example, she can't uh, wash well her hands. So they make places for disabled everywhere. And also on the sidewalks, there are special places where they uh, have disabled people uh, walking or the people who are uh, who can't see the blind they have their own uh, stretch of uh, place to to move in the city uh, so it's not only the women but it's also the disabled and the other people the children for example lately here I haven't put this but um, there are all these programs for uh, uh, city for the children and the new laws and sub laws uh, have been uh, passing through uh, to make the city a more livable city for children a livable city for children um, there's also programs in the uh, municipality of Tehran and it's important all these experts I show you the uh, in the beginning they help to program for the addicted women and the homeless women so uh, here you see there are homeless people sitting around the city where there's mm, in uh, not very nice places and they help them and they're nice to them lately just in these uh, two three last uh, months there has been a new mayor in Tehran that has changed his uh, idea about uh, not doing this not maybe not being very uh, nice to these people but before it has always been uh, 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 let's say, uh, policy to be nice to them and to bring them to uh, these uh, places where uh, also for the homeless and also for the girls who, who escape from their houses, they take them to nice centers where they're fed, when they, where they're well dressed and they can also eat and they can leave the place when they want and they can come back when they want so it's nice to have them uh, you know protected and the lady who did protect and opened uh, four of these uh, centers was this girl uh, who was a, a member of the city council of Tehran uh, she was called uh, um, Elham Fakhari and she did a lot for these centers and here also, the man who is sitting uh, uh, far here in the uh, middle is uh, the mayor of the, the late mayor of Tehran, who just changed some three months ago. And he was also a very nice man and uh, uh, went to these centers for the homeless. You see, all the homeless. Uh, sometimes there, uh, there is uh, in the winter. There are so many people coming that they have to sleep, some of them, on the floor. Uh, and also the girls uh, hoping for a better, let's say, home in future because they learn also in these uh, places sometimes things where they can do afterwards. Of course, uh, there is gender activism inside and outside Iran everywhere where um, people think about the problems of uh, gender streaming. Um, they do research, they do uh, everything, but still what is actually done is by the municipality. 
when something has to be done for the uh, women, it's not the people who study in uh, uh, America who are going to help, but it's here when we put pressure on the municipality uh, to do it. Uh, here I showed you two of the girls who are very good uh, in um, women's studies, and uh, uh, they, uh, of course, live in uh, uh, America and in London, and they just had a chat last week, uh, these two girls, on uh, women's issues and, uh, in public space. So the topic was public space and the women. I here also present to you, I first didn't want to put uh, women architects, but now I did, just to make an example uh, on through some friends showing faces who have been doing for gender streaming uh, activities and uh, uh, ideas in architecture. I think it was more than 10 years ago, it was maybe 15 years ago, when uh, Shadia Azizi, this uh, nice uh, young friend of mine, had a very good conference here, you see, on women architecture and the city. So we all went there and talked about how cities can be more women-friendly, gender-friendly, and how uh, we can do things for women um, to bring more um, sensitivity and more uh, feeling into space where they are present. If um, the public space is always uh, uh, dominated by men, it's not really very soft and not a bit more, uh, present everything becomes more safe and more uh, happy and uh, more, uh, let's say, um, delicate. Uh, we also have uh, women working on publications <coughs> and studies. They, the, the women in Tehran, the women architects, are more into the um, re writing books and essays and bringing out publications for uh, on architecture, they are more, uh, let's say, um, caring about uh, the uh, profession and about the city also. Many of them, I know some women architects here, Pantea, uh, no, this is uh, uh, Faryar, who is a very good architect, very good architect, and uh, they have their share in the star, let's say, uh, arena of the uh, architects, Iranian architects here present from many, many uh, years ago, and you see the women standing also in the middle. Some of them, of course, the uh, people who are here don't live in Iran now, but uh, many do. Sometimes they come to Iran to be jury for architecture or this kind of thing. And uh, here you have Pantea. Who's and she also works for women uh, and children, more children than women, and um, a, a children-friendly uh, city. She's uh, and she has these uh, also uh, relationships with uh, people and. Uh, to have a city more friendly for women and children, so a gender-oriented uh, program for the city. Now, now there, of course, uh, there is no comparison to, uh, to the European cities. Vienna, where everything is so beautiful. But um, here, I for your time. I'm the women's office of Vienna as a planner, so as some of the activities really started at the women's office 
and then we made a spin off and focusing again on planning issue and we the, the, so we are now have several institution focusing on on women's and gender issues in the different thematic fields and our um Understanding is that this target, the gender sensitive planning is really a target group oriented quality assessment of planning processes. Uh, we call it the gender plus concept. So it's about, uh, it's not only about men and women, but it's also about age, about children and, and old people or, or people with specific needs, uh, disabled people, or but also of different, because we have a lot of migrants in Vienna also with different cultural patterns and, for, and people also doing care work. This is very central and mostly also in, in, in Austria, the majority of the care work and housework and families is, is still done by women. And if you use this gender plus concept, you get to a fairer, but also more efficient use of public resources. Because if you know more about the specific target groups, you make a better use of your money also. And there is an impact of gender planning on the urban structure. Um, so it's always, um, it was always important to focus on this Example, quality of this really so on this everyday life patterns. And for mobility, it was also this focus, and this was really brought up, um, as Mrs. Yalda all mentioned. So the pedestrian, they're always the weakest group in, 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 in traffic issues. And so this importance of pedestrians was really brought up in Vienna from the women's side, and we reached considerable achievements for them. And now they are really accepted as a, the fourth mode of, 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 of transport. And uh, about, and there are also quality of public space and the and safety of public transport stations. These are new uh, topics brought up from, uh, articulated from this channeling issues. Uh, we started with an exhibition and it's really 30 years ago, Who Owns Public Space? Women's Everyday Life in the City. At this time it was topics both women's interest in the city, but also nobody spoke about public space at that time. Um, there were new methodologies coaches so for this and they are already the important key elements of gender planning issues so we focused on target groups we showed the life and mobility patterns of eight women and girls from a turkish housewife a student in a wheelchair a single mother a young girl a high age or a working single and we spoke for the first time of spaces of anxiety and well-being, and we first analyzed mobility data separately for men and women, and this was really uh, uh, an eye-opener because two-thirds of uh, two-third of ways uh, are done by men, and two-thirds of pedestrians' way are done by women. So it was an at, 30 years ago, it was really a high focus on cars. So the, 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 all the, the, the traffic uh, planning focused on cars and public transport. They just start to realize that there are some bikers, but nobody at all spoke about pedestrian needs. And this, this um, exhibition, there was a great response. There were about 4,000 visitors, a lot of media reports, and so in television, radio, newspapers. So it it was really a new topic at that time. And um, this was also convincing for the politicians, this issue and this And women first women 
just like first started to realize also planning projects. Here you see the different fields of activities we have developed over the years. And then so um, we changed. So as I already mentioned, after five years in the women's office, I became the head of a for 10 years again of a specific unit focusing on, um, on planning issues uh, uh, for women and gender. And now I mainstreamed in the planning direction of Vienna as a gender planning expert. Just some topics about gender sensitive mobility. We've done this in a pilot district uh, over four years. We have, these are the pictures for that. So it, Vienna in the historic part is a dense city. So it was a topic about broader sidewalks so that parents with a pram and a child can walk. Um, the child just decides that about barrier freeness. So for example, there are these stairs necessary, but they just separated the sidewalks about safe crossings. There was a lot of discussion on this small measurement because the technical department said, no, this is not possible to make this. And the, the local, it was like you um, described, it was the head of the district. The district mayor said, then let's try it. Let's just try it for six weeks and see if it functions. And then we will really construct it and fix it. And now it functions very well. So I think this is also this female emerg uh, energetic approach and very pragmatic approach to say, just let's try and see if it works. It was also about traffic lights. There were a lot of uh, um, to, to, to improve the quality lights for pedestrians, uh, the, the, the green lights, for example, that when cars are coming around the corner and elderly people go and start to, to, to go uh, to, to, to cross the street and they become anxious when cars are coming around the corner. And so we saw. that they are all already for the guarding of safety and security. Safety issues, there was, I think it's the only district which has on its local political board a women's commission and they made night walks. They marched around uh, in, in the district, identified spaces of anxiety where they had the feeling that the, the light is missing. And this is one example where, because normally in the historical parts, the lights are over the lanes and they, this is well lit, but the sidewalks are quite in the dark when there are trees. And here it was on the other side, a park with high bushes, so it really does not felt uncomfortable. And so the uh, additional light was installed. And there was uh, really uh, uh, in the district budget, because the districts are responsible for the equipment of public space in our decentralized system. So they installed an annual sum to improve the lightning situation. Also to, to create awareness on small obstacles like holes in, in the sidewalks and with a wheelchair, you really have a problem or that there are big of sidewalks cafes which become very popular, but to, to, own, to give the permission only for this if there are still these two meters for pedestrians. So there were several small measurements, but really to raise in general the quality for pedestrians. And so these are the outcomes of gender mobility activities. So that over the years, pedestrian issues have really become a significant higher importance, uh, equal tre uh, treatment of all traffic modes, the quality of Sushun is paid much more attention. There are social space analysis before and evaluation after square designs. Uh, there are networks of green and pleasant ways and the uh, traffic light circuits I already mentioned. And for example, we also, because you always have to calculate, uh, when you calculate the phases of green light, 
you normally this is taking the the, the speed of pedestrians of healthy grown up, but you reduce um, the speed in example so it will become longer. Lightning so that the quality for the train is paid much more attention and Up the checklist for those where you avoid spaces. So actually, do a bit installed in year to traffic. And this is a successful project. Like we, we, so it was like a pilot process for gender. Because it did with the in 36 parks. They stayed there and watched, and they realized they have a problem that at the age of health, you're out of the park, and that all the sports facilities and playgrounds are much more focused on boys. We have a problem with the active room. So we realized this big topic and the strategic planning document for the city of Vienna to create pilots uh, for just realized projects for effective participation of girls. Then we made an evaluation from these parks and then we developed gender sex. Fact here, uh, and I will say that a new project that I will. It is real dreaming at its best. It's also because parks are owned and managed by the city, so I think this is quite easy to do. So, gender sensitive housing. So we as uh, Vienna is also a federal state, and therefore we can give subsidies for. Uh, subsidized housing where there is a rent control. Also, the aim is to, to have uh, affordable housing and flats. And here we have realized uh, four pilot, pro uh, uh, five pilot projects focusing on, um, on um, uh, gender specific interests, but now it's also mainstream. So, this is one of the first. This was the start, and it's Frauenwerkstatt. It's, um, it's, it, there were, it, this was a competition, and we started this men's office at my period at the women's office, where I was the head, and we started uh, a competition for the urban design proposal and the, the uh, layouts. And it was only for women, so it was an invited competition. We invited uh, eight female architects, uh, and four of them. Then there was the urban design. This was for Franziska Ullmann, and uh, three others were chosen. And this is how it looks like. I just give you some uh, because one is this uh, um, flat layout where the rooms are all have the same size, and so you can easily change the use of the rooms. Uh, during the life phases of a family, uh, uh, and uh, so the, the furniture always fits, and the kitchen has a very prominent position, so you can have a look on both uh, sides, and uh, this is really high flexibility. Um, this was really the beginning, and we developed quality criteria such as for housing and uh, Due to the success and as the quality of this project was so convincing, the women's office and me as the head has been invited in this qual and integrated in the quality assessment uh, for housing subsidies uh, since many years. Urban design, this is a more recent um, um, example where we try to develop um, 
to, to, to say that the, the, the uh, green spaces and public space is really the backbone of uh, urban uh, development. For urban design, you should not start with the buildings as it's very often, but really to have to realize this interdependence between the typology of building and, and, and the quality of public and semi-public open spaces. And it was a gender pilot. This was fixed in the political program as a pilot. And so we developed the, really the buildings and the, and the, the, the open space was decided with a shading diagram, not for, for the, because the middle, the middle one uh, seemed more logical. There was an existing small park and uh, an extension of it. But then we said that from a, a, the, a shadow diagram, it's good to have a shaded part and to have a sunny part and to offer different qualities. And therefore, we decided for the other solutions. What I told you now, you find this. We have uh, published all our hand-knitted methods over the year in, uh, in and, uh, the developed toolkits and our uh, targets uh, we have formulated in this manual, gender mainstreaming in urban planning and urban development. You find this in the internet, so this list of criteria for housing of a parks you find there. And if you are interested, so there is a description about the state of the art and the um, published quite recently, two years ago, uh, in Rutledge, in Gendered Approaches to Spatial Development in Europe. And they practically the two chapters, uh, quite a lot of theory and, and, and topics, but two practical uh, uh, realized uh, chapters, uh, about realized projects, by description there about Vienna. Very simple uh, method, which I would like to to share with you is the fairness check. So this is really quite simple, but um, this, to discuss in a structured way um, the, the impacts of different measurements. For example, we have the, used this for our mobility, strategic mobility concept and our strategic concept of public space. And now we try to use it also for, for concrete urban uh, spaces um, because it's, we involve their gender and diversity and inclusive, uh, inclusion experts. And this strategic concept there in the end, it ends with a list of measurements. And then we, discuss, we define four or five uh, target groups. Um, for example, people doing care work or young people or uh, people don't uh, having um, mobile phones, for example, because everybody was at that time in the mobility concept was only about digital facilities. But we know that 10% of the population does not have a, a smartphone, for example. And so we discussed if there is a positive impact of a measurement to the groups. And then just to visualize, and if you realize this does not have a positive impact, for example, for the poor people who don't uh, have a smartphone, and if you have a lot of digital apps and facilities without giving them a chance uh, to share, to reach this, uh, so we we fix that, for example, every there always must be also analog information, and you always have to be aware of the need of the two channel information. So we really redefined a third of measurements uh, after this fairness check. So I think this is really a very basic uh, method and helps you to make this quality assessment of proposals in a very structured way. A very simple method, again, it was uh, a, a planning office and women there, and they were, they were 
Good anger. Um, uh, they spoke also Arabic and Turkish, and so they were sitting at the, the, the bar process with on three tables on three different spots, offering cakes and coffee, asking people, inviting them to show on the map what they like, what they dislike on the place, uh, what kind of activities they want to do there. And there were posters showing the photos of different atmospheres and with the feedback points uh, just to, maybe you know this from seminars, here you have five points and just mark your best options or feedback, this feedback points and we um, differentiated it by color. So this was my idea to make it what are the preferences of uh, women and, and, and from the size, what are the preferences of women and the youngsters. And this is a very simple uh, method, but you, for example, you can react very quickly. There were much more boys giving their opinions. So I jump to every girl passing by and say, please also give your opinion. And we have done this all this urban design proposal we have developed. Uh, we also uh, ask people to mark the places they like or dislike. And, and we also do by color and, and, and about age. And this is really quite interesting because then you know what are the different needs of different groups. And then you can discuss your play design is offered. Uh, for the different groups. So, um, yes, here are some places like Now and we For example, the women ask for much more and so they were not in most because they're all different. use making a modern areas there and now it now look nicer. So this last uh, 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 this one of the development and um, in, in Vienna, uh, 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 this was also there we have developed uh, in of the man we remain should strike so this so this is what you see and we are quite here that we have the first managed shopping street not a shopping mall but because this was a development agency so they uh, they forced 
the uh, the developers when they were selling the site to say in the contract that the ground floor in the main shopping street renting is done by a specific society and so now you really find all the necessary shops there when people move in to give some pictures we try to make it as car reduced as possible also no parking is allowed in the street and so this has a quite a better uh, quality and also um, on the right corner on the lower row you see the lightning so that also there is good lightning for the sidewalks and the lake uh, uh, and it comes together also this already main methods because of gender sensitive park design this was followed also for this park beside the lake and all the uh, new because there are new streets so there's a need of new street names and the decision was because historically streets and monuments in our city they're always only for men celebrating historical men and so here was the decision to name the streets uh, or all their personalized street names are named after women, artists, scientists and politicians. So this general relevant gender principles, it's a polycentric structure with different small centers because all in general this will be about 20,000 inhabitants. A city of short distances of mix of use that there are also working places, uh, physical access, uh, accessible to, uh, employment, as already mentioned, a good local supply and shopping facilities and social infrastructure, quite a wide range of housing types and flat typologies between ownership and or you can rent the flats and quite really a car reduced. Um, a, a mobility system and there is an uh, underground line there and a neighborhood management to support neighborhood relations. This I skip, there is another smaller urban development area where I'm involved as a gender planning expert and here we also have a quality board and it's a long work from the master until the design of the house is just to stick on your quality approach. I think the factors of success in Vienna, there's a strong political will for these gender planning issues. There are, we are quite working together quite good between administration, scientific community and NGOs. We have a strong women's network inside administration and there have been specific resources and these pilot projects were really good to start and convince the majority within administration and politicians that it really creates a quality uh, if you make this gender planning effort. Um, learned and challenges, um, there are new promising uh, form but it needs now I think due to the climate crisis we really have to, to make new efforts about microclimate trees, rainwater management, green facade so there are new challenges um, and to end I think we, we, we call it fair shared city principle that they are more important than ever and we, that this gender planning can really <laughs> contribute to the use of the transformative possibilities of the post world. Hopefully this pandemic will end. And in the 19th century, male engineers have transformed the structure of our cities. And in the 21st century, a similar urban restructuring is needed due to the climate crisis or catastrophe. And this time with female politics, expert and a high involvement as women and I really found it impressive as you showed how it were, have been the women who all engaged themselves in the to, to improve the situation in Tehran and I'm really convinced we need all the energies of women as experts or as citizens and in Europe, like with new female mayors like Paris or Barcelona, show this considerable transformative energy. And I'm really convinced that social sustainable gender 
if a post fossil urban restructuring is a chance and we should start immediately. Thank you for your attention.